Hey, 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 what's going on everybody out there? Ladies and gentlemen, men and women, males and females. Welcome back. Welcome to another video. I want y'all to like this, share this, subscribe to the channel so the notifications can accelerate and you'll have more people in the universe knowing that there is another human being with a message and that's speaking facts. For those who down, I'm here to uplift them. All right. This video today, y'all better grab your popcorn because this is the first time I'm coming out explaining my story with my past relationships. I was quiet about it, but I'm at a place now where I'm healed. Um, I'm in the best shape and feeling and place at peace in my life to reveal my testimony to tell y'all what happened in my past relationships. This is my journey, this is my story. I have no control over who feel offended. Um, my job is to be a man and, and, and talk about my life story the best way I can put it out in the universe where people can know that they are not the only ones going through trauma and hurt and pain and people betraying them. That's the whole thesis of this video. So, grab your popcorn. I got my tea, by the way. We drinking some tea, y'all. All right, so, um, my ex-wife got caught cheating on me. I caught her red-handed, all right? So, we're going to bring y'all back, and I want to give y'all a story to the lead up. I want to I want to lead y'all to the story where it happened where she cheated. So number one, we're gonna uh, we're gonna definitely be brief. I'm not gonna go too too deep into detail because it will be too long of a video. But I want to break I want to break down much as possible so y'all can understand that y'all not the only ones that's going through nonsense in life. So however, um, I moved back to Philadelphia. I moved back to Philadelphia. I left my ex. I'm out of town. I had a four year relationship with her. But um she uh when I left her, I tr I went back over there to get some more stuff at the house or whatever. So to make a long story short, I found out she was talking to another guy. And um I wanna say rest in peace to my ex out of town as well. By the way, she passed away in 2014. Um, natural causes or so. But um however I left in 2006 and um, I moved back to Philly. But when I went back to get my stuff, I had found out the guy she was talking to was half black and Spanish, right? She was like, he had black and Spanish. I said, oh, okay, bet. I said, are we getting, are we getting Spanish people now? And, huh? That's how it led for me to say, you know what? I was, yes, it's petty, but I was, I was like showing her, I can get me a Spanish girl, a full Spanish girl. You know, it was really, wrong reasons that I got into uh, the relationship. Um, so, however, I met my, I, I was coming from work. Um, I had moved back to Philly. And when I moved back to Philly, got the name out of her name, because got the car out of her name because my registrations got suspended because me not having insurance or whatnot. And um, I put it in her name, but I got it out of her name at a with another girl that I was dealing with, an Indian girl. She bought the car off on me. She was picking me up left and right, taking me back and forth to work, even after she bought the car from me or whatnot. So, um, however, it fell off with her. So I was coming home for lunch and I seen my ex, uh, my ex-wife on the, uh, coming up the train and I was going down the train. So I stopped to talk to her. You look nice. Your hair look beautiful. Were you on your way to, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, getting a little rap in my little corny rap. It's like, no, I wasn't corny. I was full. I always had some some bars for him that I was just spitting. But anyway, um, she was smiling, happy that I was uplifting her soul. And I said, I don't have, I'm on limited time. You know, I'm on lunch or whatever, going home real fast. Let me give you a call. So I gave her a call. Long story short, uh, fast forward it. We communicate, got real cool. And she started coming over. But the first time we went out, my man Scott came and grabbed me or whatnot, and uh, we went to the movies or whatever. And Scott and his girl, it was like a double date. So we went out, we come back to the crib after the movies or whatnot. 
we was intimate inside the movies, rather kissing or whatnot, you know, just filling each other out and anything. So by the time we get back, uh, you know, we did what grown folks do. Um, I found out after and later that she had a boyfriend. She told me she had a boyfriend. So I'm like, wow, I didn't know. I, you know, she told me, you know, she got a boyfriend. So uh, I'm, I'm still in my vulnerable stage because I just moved back to Philadelphia. I'm just trying to meet people. I'm trying to get, get back in the mood. I had my own little apartment. So she was at the apartment and whatnot. And, you know, um, first night it went down, however. That was a red flag because it shows that she's fast. Um, even though she might could have just been feeling me, but you know, in most cases, some people just don't let somebody, people with value, don't let it go down that fast. Real ladies will tell you that. Put the comments in the comment section for the real ladies. I think that was one red flag for the first night. Um, and however, it, it, it repeatedly went in that perspective, she constantly came over and I was getting what I was getting and she was getting what she was getting. So she ended up pregnant. She ended up pregnant, getting pregnant on a boyfriend by me. So I got a DNA test um, to make sure my daughter was mine. And it came back 99.999. When it came back 99.999, it got serious with us because my daughter was around me every day. And however, she moved in with me and we became a family. So they say it always end the way it starts. You know, and um, after a while, she got pregnant with my son. We came from one apartment that I was staying at, where we both staying at. Then we moved to Fork Rise Street. When she got, when she was pregnant with my son, we moved to Fork Rise Street. And when we moved to Fork Rise Street, um, we was in there just regular family going, you know, going doing doing what family do, go out, you know eat restaurants every weekend, ordering out. However, in the mix of this, she used to always smoke weed. I didn't smoke weed at the time. And then when I met her, it was her birthday and she wanted me to smoke with her on her birthday. So I started smoking with her on her birthday. That's how we got back. That's how I got back smoking marijuana at that time. This was like right when my daughter was born. And, um, so that was the one she was pulling me down by doing that. And she said she going to smoke till she dies. She never going to stop. So I, I, I looked at that as, wow, she don't never want to better herself. However, um, while we have my son and everything and, you know, we go to the beaches, you know, we was at in Jersey because she from Jersey. We would go to her sister house and stay the night and have a great time, just family time. So I'm thinking I'm all in. I'm all dug in. Um, there was an encounter, uh, when I was, uh, like right when she had my son, she had my son, right when she had my son, it was an encounter. I was on a computer one time. I'm going to tell it all. I'm not just going to tell the part where she messed up at. I'm going to tell the part where we went through things according to the details of what could have happened on my behalf as well. So I was on the, I was on the computer. This when Facebook first came out and I was communicating with my ex, Anastasia. And, uh, you know, all I said to her was, uh, you know, if it wasn't my, for my situation, my family or whatnot, you know, we'd be together, you know. And I was just keeping it real. Everybody communicate, but she's seen it. And when she's seen it, she got real snappy at me. She got real mad at me, real crazy. And um, I'm like, yo, I'm just, it's not like I was trying to cheat. What I was letting her know that if it wasn't for my, my, my situation, my family, you know, you and I will probably be kicking it or whatnot. Some will say it's wrong. Some will say it was just communicating. It was just a conversation like normal other people. It's just like equivalent to a girl telling a man, like if it wasn't for my man, I, you know, we'll be together or I got a man. So it's, a, it's the same thing. You letting a person know you're, however, moving forward. She stole, she, she, she had a thing with hitting me and then running and then leaving somehow, like walking off. So I think she, she punched me or kicked me. One, if I can remember, I think she kicked me or punched me or something. And then ran. And I got so mad. And then chased her down. I had like a, I, I had like a belt near me. And I chased her down. 
And then I didn't plan on hitting her in the face with it. I was going to pop her probably in her ass or something like that. But I slipped after, while chasing her. And when I slipped, I swing the belt and it hit her in the face. Boom. Leave a little red mark or whatever. A little, little red, no permanent marks, none of that. Scar went up, I mean, not the scar, the uh, uh, mark went away in anything the next day. Uh, however, uh, well, the time when I came back. But she called the boys on me. She called the boys on me, y'all. And I got booked. I got booked. All right? So I got booked. And when they called, when she called me over, she told them, yeah, he hit me in the face with the belt and so on and so forth. You know, I was explaining how she hit me first and she hit me too. But, you know, I slipped and I swung the belt not realizing it was going to hit in the face. I really didn't know it was going to hit in the face. But it did. However, uh, they let me out on the ROR. So I came home. I came home, what? I think like the next day or something like that. And uh, we was all good. Uh, I came home. No, 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 no. Actually, actually, uh, I think I was at my mom's. I think I was at my mom's and then I was communicating with her from my mom's when I came home. And then that's when I went home from there. Uh, we was talking or whatever, I speak to my kid and whatnot, and then went home from there. So we regular family, doing regular stuff. Six years, this is a six year relationship. Time went by, um, time then went by and we're doing everything. Thanksgiving's Christmas, uh, you know, going this place, that place, having a great family time. I'm just like, okay, this this is where it's at. This is my family. We ain't, ain't nothing jumping, you know? And um, not to mention, oh, I forgot to mention, when she was pregnant with my daughter, I, I forgot this part. When she was pregnant with my daughter, I caught her sending pictures to her ex. She was, he had a pic, he had a pic of his of his, of his, you know what I mean? In her phone. And she had a, she was showing him, the, she was showing him her stomach and, 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 and titties and, and the shower. And she was even trying to set up. Oh, I skipped this whole, I skipped the whole part. She was trying to set up a time because she, she ain't move in yet with me. This is before we found out my daughter was mine complete because after I got the DNA test done from Roberta for 475. So, she was trying to creep with this man. So she was trying to, she had me and she was trying to have him. Real grimy and dirty, real evil with it. Yeah. No morals at all. No honor in the veins. To this day, no honor in the veins. But she was trying to, so I, I took, I seen the phone. I seen anything. She had a little Apple phone at the time. I slammed that shit on the ground. Bam! Slammed that shit on the ground. Got so mad at her. I'm talking about like really snapping on this girl. And, um, yeah, I think she probably, I ain't speak to her like in a few days or so. She, she was at her sister house and then eventually she like called and apologized saying it wasn't like that. She don't want him. She just still have feelings for him because of, you know, they was together when she was cheating on him, messing with me and so on and so forth. And so I kind of gave that a pass that went, that just been thrown out uh, in the trash. I put all that behind me. But it was a red flag. Um, moving back forward. Uh, now, let's just get to the part where the second, the last time, because I'm not going to hold y'all too long, but I want to get to the point. And the point is, after we went through our circumstances, living life, what caused the corruption was the last encounter we had was we was all in the bed. I was tired. I was in the work. The kids was, they was three and five years old. They was, they was babies at the time. So I'm at one and, and you know, my daughter laying next to her father, you know, we land down and my son laying down there next to his mom. We was all in the same bed. They came and you know, so we all watching TV together or whatever, able to see the TV, but she was kissing him. She like, mwah, mwah. you my man. Mwah, mwah. And I know she didn't mean anything like, um, I, I believe, I know she didn't mean anything to where as though like it was really attentionally like on a sexual behavior, but I just didn't like it. So when she was kissing him saying, nah, you my man, I'm like, no, that ain't your man. That's not your man. That's your son. Stop kissing him saying, are you my man? Are you my, you know what I'm saying? I'm your girl. And you know, that's weird. It was weird behavior. And um, I think my, my daughter was even by my side with saying, you know, 
on my side telling her the same thing. So she was, we got into an argument over that. And when we got into an argument over that, I called her a weirdo. I'm like, you're a fucking weirdo. You know what I'm saying? You're an effing weirdo. You know, and she stole me. Boom, I seen light and all that. Real talk. So I start messing up. I start hitting her legs. Bam, bam, because I didn't want to mess up her face. You know, she real light bright. So I didn't want to scar any, you know, mess up any bruises or anything like that on her face. So I start hitting her legs. And my daughter was even hitting her too. It was crazy, y'all. I couldn't believe it. So... After this, my ass going to go in the kitchen and grab a knife, right? After I do all that, and I stood by the door like, bitch, I fucking, don't you ever put your hands on me, man. I, like, real stupid and psyched out, not even thinking, not even in my conscious mind. I was smoked weed at the time. I was under the influence around that time, maybe, or so. But I stood at the door. I didn't go in her face or nothing like that. She was at the other end of the room. But it was no reason or oh, no justification for me to have that knife threatening her, saying I would poke her up and all of that. But I was, I, I, I spazzed out. I was so mad. I was that mad. And uh, she called the police on me and I got booked. All right. So I got locked up over that. And uh, I stayed in jail for like, I think it was like, maybe I'll say four days, five days. And I got, I got bailed out, uh, I got bailed out from a you know a few friends. My mom, my uncle helped me, or whatever. And um, I think I even had a couple dollars in my pocket. I had like two, three hundred in my pocket, or whatever. When they when they locked me up. So um, long story short, I got out. Right? She had written on the wall my PP number and all of that, and she was happy that I came home. She was happy that they released me. It was all good. I apologized to her, baby. I, you know, I miss you. I love you. I mean, everything was all good. She was, you know, she was saying she apologized from hitting me and I apologize. You know, everything was all squared up. Regular stuff that people go through. Regular stuff that people go through. And uh, I'll say this was January the 23rd when I came back home. A month later, I was February the 22nd. We all good. February the 22nd, 2013. I give her a kiss. Mwah. Love you, baby. This and that. Go to work in the morning. I come back, right? Back home that morning. This whole situation is toxic, y'all. This is a whole toxic relationship. So uh, I come back that morning, that same morning. So this was a Friday. I would normally get paid on Friday. And I would normally go to... Back then, I would normally go to Walmart to cash my check. So she knew on this specific day that I was going to go to Walmart and cash my check. So she like, he ain't coming home. This is my opportunity. Mind you, she was working at a job that they put her in a position that she didn't want to do. And they knew she couldn't do to force her to quit. So I said, go ahead. You stay home. I handle the bills. I let her stay home while I handle the bills. This is how this happened. I come back home, open the door. Nine, and I, I had to be to work 8.30. I arrived back home by like 9.15. I open the door, push the door open. She, I, I feel the door get pushed back on me. I'm like, oh shit, what's going on? Why, why is this door getting, what's going on? Who's pushing the door back? So I hurry up and force my way in. Boom, move her back. She stepped back. After I pushed the door open, she got a pink shirt on. With no clothes, no panties on, shaved and everything. So I'm like, bet. Perfect time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm thinking she was laying down that way and just, you know, sleeping naked or whatever and just shaved herself, like, in case, you know, for later on when I come home. I goes to my room. She moves, she goes back to the living room area. Cause my room, my room, the first room that you could go to when you walk in the apartment. I push my door back. I feel somebody back there. Guess who was back there, y'all? I'm thinking it was my kids playing with me. I see a nigga come from behind the door with his shirt off. He's shaking. She ain't tell me nothing. She ain't tell me nothing. She ain't tell me nothing. I say, whoa. I said, you got a nigga in my crib, though? I say, wow, you got a nigga in my crib. Look, there she go, calling the cops again, 911, calling the cops again back there. 
Mind you, January the 19th, when I got booked and I got back, came back on January the 23rd, in reality, I, it was a stay away order. I didn't supposed to be at the house, but it was my house. It was my crib. It was, you know, we was the, we a family. Now, nobody be following that sometimes when things be worked out. But she knew that. So in her mind, she said, this is how grimy and dirty she is. She took advantage and abused the uh, opportunity that she had. She said, you know what? This is my opportunity to cheat and bring a guy in his house. So if he catch me, I don't care. If he catch me, he's supposed to be here anyway, according to the stay away order with the police report when it comes to him getting locked up that time. So if she was to call the police on me, they was going to take me back down, violating the stay away order. Right? All along, she was still good with me. So um, I'm checking, dude. I'm making sure he ain't got nothing on him. So I'm like, yo, what you got on you, family? You got something on you? So I start checking him. He's still shaking. She ain't tell me nothing. She ain't tell me nothing. So when I notice he ain't got nothing on him, I crack him. Bam! Punch him right in his eye. Split his whole eye, y'all. Split his whole eye. Start hitting him again. Bam, bam, bam. Then I put him in a headlock, right? I got him in a headlock hitting him. Bam. You know what I mean? In a headlock or whatever. He break out the headlock and, and dark. Get out of there. And um, when he get out of there or whatever, I goes back to the back like, yo, you bringing the like I'm holding myself from knocking her head off her shoulders. I'm holding myself from killing her because I wanted to murder this girl, y'all. I wanted to kill her. I wanted to kill his men in jail right now that killed for this type of situation that took its place. It's women in the ground dead and men in the ground dead that killed for this type of situation that took its place. So I hurry up after I curse her out or whatever and go chase him. So when I go chase him, I catches up with him. So I said, I ain't going to hit you, family. I just want to talk. I ain't going to hit you. Let's talk. I said, hey, let me get one of them cigarettes. He had a cigarette on him. <laughs> so uh, he gave me one of the cigarettes or whatever. I like the cigarette. And we start smoking or whatever. And I asked him, I mean, how many times you was in my crib? Whatever. Yeah, he said, I came in there Monday, Tuesday, and I think he was in, oh, he said he was in there, yeah, he said Monday and Tuesday, and then he was in there today. Oh, it was Tuesday, th Thursday, or one day. he was in there like three times. I remember him being three times that week, and um, I remember I was calling her one of those days. It was like one of those days I was calling her, and she wasn't answering her phone, and when I finally asked her, like, why you ain't answer the phone? She said, because I came home and the house was cleaned up. She said, I was cleaning up and I lost my phone. Now I know why she was cleaning up and I know why she ain't answer the phone. And she lied and said she lost the phone during the process because she had dude in there. And uh, after that situation, he said, he, I was talking with him and he was saying she told him she was going through a divorce. And I'm like, wow, she lied to this man just to get some sex from him. Even though he ain't going, even if, even if she told the truth, he wouldn't have cared anyway. He just trying to smash something. Black men don't care about none of that. They just trying to smash something. So uh, afterwards, I wasn't right since when I was in the house. So I stayed in the house. Uh, it was March. I stayed in the house till March for like 15 days. And... um. Every night, because I went to get Lucy's from the corner, every night I was waking up in the middle of the night, banging on the bed like, shit, 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 shit. Like banging on the bed. Like, I can't believe this bitch did this to me. And I would light my little cigarettes and smoke my cigarettes and look back at her. And I would look like, you bitch. Like, and I, I was contemplating on really going to jail, really hurting this girl, going back to jail. Something was telling me, yo, just beat this bitch bad and just go to jail. And something was telling me, no, you got to think of a strategic plan to get away. I wanted to hurt her real bad, y'all. I really did. And um, fast forward, this specific day I was at work and she was posting on Instagram showing her breasts. She was showing her breasts. And I was like, take that down. I told her to take that down. She didn't want to take it down. She was like blowing a kiss, showing her breasts, like not all her titties, like, but just like the cleavage. 
She didn't want to take it down. And we got into an argument. And she said, you come back here, I'm going to get you locked up and your clothes going to be all out of the house or whatever. I'm throwing your clothes out the window and so on and so forth. So I called my moms and my moms went to the crib to get my clothes or whatnot. And uh, I didn't go back to the house. She called the police on my mom and all that. And uh, I called the landlords. I was close with the landlords, BB and Sheik, letting them know what's going on, letting them know I'm not going to be back at the house. Mind you, I was dealing with BB and Sheik and then moved her in. So they knew me more than they were siding with me. They was Indians. They were siding with me more than her. They had so much honor in their veins. They got me another crib. It shut down that crib. They shut down that crib, man. I come back to my crib, but like within two days, they told her to leave. She went homeless. She ain't had no choice but to give me the kids now. That's how I got my kids. She ain't had no choice but to give me the kids. I comes back, all my all my stuff at the side of the crib. I had to go dig in the trash for clothes, shoes, colognes that she threw away. A lot of stuff that was my stuff, I had to dig in the trash and grab it just to have some clothes. Seeing my couches, seeing my bed, everything on the side of the house, going to trash. The most hurtful feeling you can ever experience in your life, guys. And um, so my children um, was at people, how she was staying at at first. I went down there. When, when they told her to leave, after a while, she ain't had no choice but to give me my kids. And when she gave me my kids, I went up there, got full custody. I went and filed for a divorce. And I got child support from her in the whole nine. And she been homeless for about seven years after that. She was homeless. She ain't even get in another serious relationship to this day, having got into a serious relationship. But five months after that, when I left in March, I got into a relationship with another Puerto Rican girl who stepped in my life and was a wolf in sheep clothing. I thought I hit a lick. I thought I made a jackpot hit meeting this woman because she stepped in five months later after I was still hurting and I didn't want to be in a relationship. But she said, I know what I want. And I'm thinking this woman that I met next, five months later, was the woman of my dreams in my life. Stay tuned to part two of that story. All right. So long story short, I got a divorce in 2015 after separating from my children's mother. And my children was in the next room, too. They was in the next room while she was cheating with this guy. Not to mention, I don't think I mentioned that, but they was in the next room. Yep. But uh, I got a divorce from her. She took like a month to sign the papers, but she signed it and gave it back to me. And uh, I got primary care custody for my children to this day. My daughter almost 16. My son is 14. And uh, yes, I made it successful through this storm with her. And um, you can too. If you're hearing the story, I'm here to uplift those who's going through the same situation. Uh, it wasn't easy. It was very painful. And um, I made it out. And this is my journey. I want y'all to like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel because I got more stories to come. This is my life and you got a life as well that's equivalent to this. And I want you to tell your story or you could just hear mine and share it if you can relate to it. But part two is next. All right. So peace and love, y'all. I'm gone. Your boy.